Welcome to another Guide to Exile guide, and in this video I'll be showcasing Delirium, which was added in 3.11. And so with the Delirium League, it added the Delirium mechanic, which is this door, or which you can start interacting with by walking through this little portal right here. And so once you walk through the portal, Delirium Fog will start traversing through the map, and it's just basically a mechanic that allows you to get extra rewards while clearing and killing the map. So let's go. In the bottom left above my HP bar, you will see a little armor piece. That means one of the rewards I'll be getting is armors. And by killing random mobs within the map, the reward will increase, or the reward counter will increase. And once you reach certain milestones, like I should reach soon, you will get extra rewards. So now, I will also be getting weapons as a reward as, um, or when the leak mechanic ends. It's important to do the leak mechanic fast though, because the fog spreads through the map, and as or as time goes on, it starts leaving the map. So you want to try and clear this as fast as possible. Delirium can also give rare monsters special modifiers that are usually not a problem for most builds, but they can be annoying if they're really, really juiced up. And so I'm just going to continue to clear the areas, try and make my way to the boss, not really full clearing the map for the sake of the video but you do want to clear as much as possible whenever delirium is on your map so that you can get the most rewards and the biggest thing and the biggest rewards you can get are delirium splinters and so what delirium splinters are is if you get uh, around 300 of them I think uh, you unlock a simulacrum which is uh, basically just a corrupted area based off of one of the towns in the game oh I died that sucks but as you probably would have seen right before I died all of the items that dropped were like or er, all the items and rewards I was supposed to get from the delirium dropped just somewhere on my body and another thing you can get are these delirium orbs which when used and applied to maps will make them a percent delirious and guarantee their reward type so if I were to use this fine delirium orb onto a map it would become 20 percent delirious and I would get guaranteed currency rewards every time that bar fills up and it maps can get to 100% delirious and 100% delirious and really really jacked up maps is the can is considered one of the end games in Path of Exile and really the pinnacle of money making and so it's a really good league do it every time you see it Another thing that drops are these things called cluster jewels. And cluster jewels are very interesting. Um, they can roll notables, which are really important, rather than these small notables. The big notables have very good mods, and they can be socketed on cluster jewel sockets, which are found around the tree. One here, one here, one here, one here one here yeah and you get the point and so we can we can try and show it off quickly so when you socket in a cluster jewel it basically is a way for people to just customize their tree so if I were to put three more points here I could add in another medium cluster jewel with these same mods and it has another small jewel socket, so if I were to get a small jewel, 
I think I put them in here, a small cluster tool, I'd be able to allocate points, get to here, and then socket in a small cluster jewel. And so, as you would have seen, on the large cluster jewel, there's two medium jewel sockets, so I could put potentially two of these, and therefore, in each of the medium jewel sockets, one small cluster jewel sockets. Cluster jewels are probably one of the strongest ways in the game to make a build really, really strong, but they are a large, large investment to make and pretty difficult to get good ones of. On large cluster jewels, you can roll up to two large notables. And so let's see if I can get one. Probably not. There's burden projection. And when you uh, allocate it, you'll get spell damage and knock enemies hit, or knock enemies back on hit with spell damage. And see, now there's two, so you'll have spell damage and ch uh, block spell damage chance if you cast a spell recently. And then you'll have burden projection again, and you can allocate both of those points if you if you were to put them on the tree. But that oh, oh I almost forgot for simulacrums you can run them like a regular map and once you do them it's basically a wave mechanic so you'll be in an area and you can start separate waves it goes up to wave 30 now and the in the rewards and difficulty increase as the waves go on but that's also one of the most profitable things in the game but just getting the splinters is a little bit hard. But that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.